Aren't you interested in learning breakthrough wealth building strategies, such as how to flip a home in less than two weeks using other people's money with no real estate license, or how to build a low cost home based business? You can discover how to take passive income from any source and invest it into real estate, stocks, or business to become financially independent investing in any market with Residual Roads Business Institute. Collaborate with Andre and other Residual Roads advisors to create a free action plan and start implementing strategies today. Go to www.residualroads.com or email info at residualroads.com. Welcome to the Investing Uncensored podcast. You've been searching for different ways to become financially independent or generate passive income to live out your life's purpose as you've seen others do it, but need insight on how. Well, get excited because here you'll discover the tips and resources to fulfill that need. Andre Stewart has spent more than a decade successfully making it happen for himself and others. This is the Investing Uncensored podcast. And now here's your host, Andre Stewart. Welcome to another episode of Investing Uncensored. I'm your host, Andre Stewart. And today I want to talk to you guys about discipline and tools to reach the goals that you might have personally and financially uh, for your career and as far as you want to build wealth over time. Before I get into it, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story about me. And it just goes, it ties into kind of what I'm going to discuss. In the last seven months, I think on one podcast, I did talk about my aunt and my grandmother. Both of my aunts passed away in the last seven months, non-COVID related. And then my final grandmother, so the final two aunts, and then my final grandmother passed away. Two of them were within the same month, within seven days. And my aunt was taking care of my grandmother and she just passed after my grandmother died, just maybe grief or something like that. Or she just took, you know, mentally she couldn't, couldn't deal with it. Maybe she felt it was her fault because she was taking care of her and some things happened. But, you know, my grandmother was 87 and, you know, it, maybe it was just her time to go, but my aunt took it the wrong way and she passed away within seven days. And then, you know what? My dad actually passed maybe a month and a half after that. So within seven months, I lost my father, my grandmother. And the last of my two aunts, I still I was I wasn't recording any podcast, but it goes back to you know having discipline, and that just leads me into what I was about to say. Like I was still doing this happened, you know, up in December and January of this year, and so you guys know that I said I wouldn't have a huge break in doing podcast anymore because I was developing the mobile app, and then it finished, and then I was going to get going. So in that time frame, what I did, I recorded a lot. And then I just saved them on, on my computer. And so then me putting in a lot of hours recording and having the discipline to do that, I didn't see my dad coming. That just came out of nowhere. And I, I'm not going to get into, you know, what happened. There's still some investigation going on with that, with the hospital. But I didn't see that one coming. And so with me having the discipline that I did have to just constantly be recording and recording all the time, I had enough podcast episodes basically on my computer that I was just able to send over to the editor and he was able to upload them while I was down taking care of the situation with my family or my dad, I would say, going over to help my mom out. You guys might have heard me on even the last podcast or two back where it was recorded in December and it didn't get released until January or January or February because that's what I mean. So I recorded a lot of these in December and my dad passed away June, I'm sorry, January 6th. So I just had some of that stuff and I was just kicking it over to the editor and he was just editing it and I was trying to produce it uh, live whenever I could. But that just goes back to me in what I want to talk to you guys about. Like there's a lot of distraction that you could have. You just got to have the discipline to push through it. And it was a brutal, brutal last year for me to lose that many people, you know, basically half of my, the heads of my family, they're all gone. So there's not really anybody left except for my mom. And uh, that's it. And then I got a, you know, one more, two, two other uncles, but other than that, there's, there's no aunts or anything like that. So life gonna, is going to come at you. Like there is never going to be perfect. Your life is never going to have or go as planned. You know what I mean? You're going to have those up and down days. That's just how life is. So it's like for you to think that you're going to just be able to get out here and reach your goals and become financially independent, like there's not going to be any roadblocks. That's just, that's just crazy. You know what I mean? So 
I just tried to push through it. And even the last podcast podcast that I did, I didn't, um, that wasn't what, it wasn't pre-recorded. You know, I did that one not too long ago and you really couldn't tell, you know what I mean? I'm still trying to, you know, push through. I don't wear my heart on my sleeve. So you wouldn't really know. That goes back to it. Like when you're going through things in life, you just got to push through it. And nobody around you needs to really know what you're going through, right? If you're trying to hit a goal, that's your goal to hit. And if you kind of understand what you're put here to do, then nothing can really get in, in your way. You know, and that my dad going down, he was like my best friend, right? We we had rough times. Obviously, as teenagers, you just go through those phases, but me and him got really close. So it was more than me losing my father. It was like me losing basically one of my best friends. And so throughout that, I still, you know, the book that I have coming out, still push through with that, push through with the app, push through it with the other book that's coming out. It's just like, you just got to figure it out. You know what I mean? And and you have your ups and down days and I have my days now, you know what I mean? I'll have days where it hits me and then I try to, you know, do what I got to do to push through it and keep going because at the end of the day, I understand what my purpose is. And so me understanding my purpose makes everything else that I'm trying to accomplish that much easier because I'm going to miss my dad and all the rest of my my aunts and my grandmother. You know, my grandmother kind of raised me. If you, you know, listen to some of the podcasts that I, I brought that up and maybe in the beginning and even in my book that I have coming out. So it's, that was a blow. It, it was almost like my mother died, right? Because she took care of me for a while. And then literally within a month and a half, then my dad goes. So it's just like, what do you do? And so me understanding, like, I'm out here for a bigger picture for not just myself, and I was doing a lot of things for my family, but I'm also doing it for other people. Like, that's the reason why I do a podcast. Like, I try to give the information that I learned over time and give it to everyone else so that they can benefit and they can change their life. No one, anyone that has a podcast or anyone that has a YouTube channel or, or write books or any kind of intellectual property or any company, if it's a service to other people, they really don't have to do it. You know what I mean? And so, you like, people who have passions and purposes, and I feel like my purpose is to do what I'm doing as far as creating an app that's going to change inequality or writing a book about something that'll help change inequality or, or things like that, just opening people's eyes to different things or whatever I've done in the past with investing, using that and giving it to other people so that if they go out there and do what I did, it kind of mitigates the risk for that person. In addition, I already have experience doing it. And I, I keep saying there's no experience better than experience itself. And when you have someone that does go on YouTube and decide to give away free content. I mean, that's, they got to be doing it for a purpose. So that's what I think you guys should take into consideration when you're trying to reach these goals you have. If you look at things from a bigger picture, understanding that you have whatever your purpose is, when things come up in your life, you'll be able to shake it off. And it, it took me a while. I was down for almost a whole month of January. It took me down just because like, he was the last straw. Like I, I tried to deal with it with the other three. And then this one was just like, man. So I was, I was down for the count, but I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, this is why I'm, why I'm here. I'm here for this mobile app. I'm here to make sure these books is published. And I've said in a podcast before, I live every day like I'm going to die tomorrow because I try to get anybody who's working with me, whatever they need from me, because what if something happens to me and they needed me for whatever it is? So I always have a fear, even with the books that I've written, I'm trying to get them out as fast as possible because I'm just like, what if something happens? Like, again, my dad was, he wasn't old. He was like 66, no previous health condition or anything like that, right? And so, you know, went to the hospital and it never came out for some minor. And so, like, that's what I'm saying. Any given time, any of us could go to the hospital and malpractice can kick in and, and something can happen and then you're gone. So what about all the stuff that you have inside of you that you didn't get out? In that time frame, because you feel like you have so much time, you don't know how much time you have. And that's why I think procrastination is one of those things. So it's like, you guys got to be out here. If you want to get into investing, if you want to do all these different things, I mean, use your time wisely. If you're sitting around at home playing video games or, or whatever you're doing, I'm not saying don't enjoy life. But I think, you know, depending on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish, if you want to be a, a Warren Buffett type of investor, you need to go out and, and, and understand commodities, understand the economy, understand option trading. You, you just got to go and do way more 
than what you're doing right now. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm just saying like you you just have to be on it, right? You got to constantly always try to be evolving as a person. You know what I mean? You got to be in a constant state of learning. And I don't know. I don't know. A lot of times I think with social media, people get super distracted and living in the age that we're in, watching like most of the most of the networks that everyone watch are owned by big firms like hedge funds. I think six out of the top TV networks are owned by there's only there's only six major corporations that own all of the networks that we watch TNT, MSNBC, Disney, the six next six networks that own all of these Hulu, Netflix is owned by BlackRock which is the largest uh investment firm in the US. That's what I mean. So it's like if if you're trying to look to the media to try to show you what you should be investing in that's a bad idea because they're they're only looking out for their best interest. So if you notice that when you're watching these networks like CNBC, you'll see that they're only bringing on people that go along with the narrative that they have. They're not going to bring on somebody when they're pushing Bitcoin. They're not going to bring someone on that's like, Bitcoin is the devil. You need to get out of it. Or 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 don't get into gold. Gold is gold is not good. And they're like, gold is great. Get into gold right now. Like You'll never see that. So pay attention to that. Next time you watch something on TV, see if they're willing to bring on an analyst that goes against whatever the narrative they're trying to push. If you watch a television, a television network and they don't have someone on there that's going against what they say, I mean, obviously it's it's, it, it's scripted. The, the major firms don't want people to do that. They don't want to know. They don't want you to know what's really going on. They want to steer the narrative because that's going to put money into their pockets. It's like advertising. You know what I mean? On all these networks, you see a thousand commercials playing and it's just basically inundation and, and it's and then you go and it's on your social media. The same thing pops up. So if you guys are trying to be these master traders and the in these these business owners and entrepreneurs, you gotta kinda take it into your own hands and start doing your own research, right? Pick up a book and and dictionaries, whatever you gotta pick up to 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 really get your understanding to the where you need it. You can't base everything off what the news says or what you read on Robin Hood and things like that, because again, the narrative is gonna go in the direction of where they wanted to go. For example, just take the current situation with the war in the Ukraine. Before the war in Ukraine, a month ago, what was the hype about? What was everyone talking about? Inflation. That's all they talked about was inflation. You couldn't see another article that didn't talk about inflation. It was That's all they talked about. And then previous to that, then obviously you know what they were talking about because we've been in it for almost two years. Every channel, on your phone, everywhere talked about the same thing. Now, if you open your phone right now, what is it going to say? It doesn't matter what station you go to, it's going to be talking about the Ukraine. And you will see that, I saw something that come out on, on TV. It was on YouTube. It wasn't even on TV. It was someone saying that they're going to try to blame inflation on the war in Ukraine, which you can't do that, right? It was already... The, look, I keep saying the, the economy has a lag. It was already super high. And now they're going to come out and tell you the reason why it's high is because we're going through this war in the Ukraine and it's pushing the prices up and it's stopping the supply chain. Yeah, right. Like that, the effects of what's going on over there probably won't be felt until two or three months from now. If the inflation reading comes out on March 10th, and it's like nine or 10, that has nothing to do with what's going on in the war if we just slap sanctions on Russia and all of that stuff. That's not, we're not even going to feel that because we're still flowing. The, I mean, they had some blockage within the last week or two weeks ago, but the CPI numbers or the inflation numbers that come out, they come out from the month before. So for them to come out and say, this is the reason why inflation's high, again, so they're trying to build the narrative to steer you guys in a different direction so it you know it takes you away from what you need to be thinking about, which is inflation. And so now you don't see anything else about it. And so now when they come out and do what they're going to do, they have something to blame it on versus blaming it and taking ownership of what they did to cause this. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish I could get into real estate investing? You can change this as quickly or as slowly as you want to now. Imagine yourself networking and making new connections in real estate globally or buying an investment property in a market or country that fits your needs. People do. They know what I'm talking about. And now you can too with InvestFAR. Connect and join the network. 
Remote investing made safe and easy. What I'm saying, again, I will keep saying this. If you go back and listen to any of my podcasts, they were all pre-recorded before anything came out. I, I've, I've never recorded anything after the fact. It's always before. And so that's why, again, you might have heard one from three podcasts ago. It was from December 21st. It didn't post until February because I had something going on. So what I'm saying now, they're, the, the Fed's going to come out March 10th, and they're going to talk about rates. I'm sorry, March 15th, because the CPI numbers come out March 10th. And they're going to talk about raising rates and where we're at with inflation. And they're going to be like, well, the war in Ukraine, it has nothing to do with that. So this is what I mean. If you understand how all of these things flow in the economy, then you know what they're saying on TV is some BS. And then you know that you can't trust what they're saying if you're trying to build out your investment portfolio, start a business or do anything like that, because it's not true. It wouldn't even make sense. And they're trying to make it seem like we're stupid. And like we don't understand that. So that's why they come out and they, they know that majority of people don't understand economics. So they can come out and tell a narrative like, well, because of this, this is the, this is the case. When it's not the case, because I keep saying the economy has lag, none of this data is going to catch up that fast to what's going on. And so that's what I mean. So if you guys really want to master investing and, and quit your job, that's what you kind of got to do. You got to really dig in and understand how the global economy works, not just the U.S. or whatever country you're in, because we are interconnected. So anything that goes on in Ukraine, we all get our products from somewhere else, not the U.S., not Australia, not Europe. We all get it from somewhere. And so that's why we're all connected. We we all supply something to each other. And so the, the reason why I'm telling you guys to understand all of these things for yourself is so when market manipulation does happen with posting articles like they're doing now to drive people out of the market, you won't be scared. You will have diamond hands. You won't have weak hands and get out. Because if you look at what happened in oil, it, it dropped. You know, it dropped on the news and it got down to 91. And now if you sold last week, it's back up at $96, almost $102 a barrel. If you hopped out last week when it was under on Friday and the other markets in Europe and Asia are open and it drove the price back up, when you try to go back in on Monday, you're going to be out. You're going to be priced out, not priced out. But you, 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 if you would have stayed in based on what you knew, then you wouldn't be buying back in at a higher level. And so that's what I mean. Understanding what's going on, you wouldn't have sold. You would have just held on to it and be like, you know what? It might take a dip because of this foolishness that they posted on, on the Internet or on TV or whatnot. I'm going to just stay in this. And so I didn't sell. I bought a bunch of option contracts on Friday when the prices were down. And even the ones that I bought were kind of overpriced. But no one bought them, but I bought them. And as soon as I bought them, I lost, you know, some money on them. But within, by the end of the day, I bought them in the morning. By the end of the day, the ones that I bought were in the money because I knew. I'm like, you know what? I don't even care. I'm not going to pay because they were trying to, you know, there's bid and ask price when you're buying options. The uh, ask price was super high and the bid on it was, you know, $10 to $15 between what they wanted. I paid the ask because I'm like, you know what? I don't care if I go negative for 20 minutes or an hour or three hours or even a day. It's going to come back to where it is. And so that's what I did to make sure that I got in the position. And look what happened. Oil was at $91 a barrel on Friday. Now it's Sunday over here, but in Europe and in Asia, it's, it's Monday. And so now oil is at 102 and I'm already in it. And, you know, so that's what I mean. So I'm already to the good. And Monday, I don't have to worry about waking up super duper early to put on contracts to, to try to catch the, the gain that's already been had. I'm already in it. So when it when it opens up tomorrow, then I've I've made money. As soon as it opens up, I'm gonna be up like, you know, five or ten percent. So this is what I mean. And the same thing with the housing market. If you understand what they're doing with rates and lumber prices and other commodities, then you'll know that you need to wait to buy a property. There will be a pullback in certain markets. I don't think they're gonna be a fifty or sixty percent collapse or any of these major collapses, but I do think they're gonna be a correction. Because if you think about what's going on with the economy, people aren't spending as much. So if people aren't spending as much and mortgage applications are down, that means the people that are trying to sell houses are either going to have to bring the price down because people can't afford it or be on the lookout for a bunch of houses coming to the market from foreclosure. And it goes back to that podcast that I did two days ago showing people how to navigate the market that's coming because there are going to be a lot of foreclosures. So, I mean, those are your strategies when it comes to real estate. You either wait till the prices dip 
or you go after the people that can't afford it and then their mortgage is coming due and then you step in and you take over the mortgage and get the house for pennies on a dollar. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to go back. You got to go back and do your research and you got to go study because then you just know how to navigate in any market whatsoever. So you'll know, like, I need to be buying an emerging markets because it doesn't look too good for the U.S. Or we're going to have to start getting more goods and services from Latin America. Or we're going to start producing more oil in the U.S. because we can't get any more oil from from Russia. So what's going to happen? Biden's going to have to step off these leases that we have, and we're going to go back to try to become energy independent like we had two, three years ago under the other administration. Like, these are the things that are going to have to happen. And with you doing your research and knowing all of this stuff, it just makes you a phenomenal investor because you are allowed to play in any facet of the market that you want because you understand it all. And the root of investing It's through understanding economics and understanding history. I keep saying that because if you know both of those, you just know how to move to the economy. Like if you if you look back at what happened and when the inflation was this high last time, then you'll be like, all right, this is what's going to happen this time, because it can't happen any other way. Just based on the amount of debt we have, you'll know that this is going to be worse than the last time this happened because we obviously have more debt. And when you have more debt, interest rate go up and it's harder to pay off that debt. So do you see what I'm saying? So this is kind of why I'm like, whatever your goals and, and, and things that you want to accomplish, you have to have the discipline in order to do these things. And this requires you to not hang out with your friends. Sometimes it requires you to not be on social media. It just requires you to take and make certain sacrifices in order for you to be able to acquire the tools and skills you need to be able to reach your financial goals or whatever it is. If it's career-wise or something that you want to do, you you want to get certifications in your industry. And sometimes a certification could take, you know, one or two years for you to be able to do that. There's open source classes that you can take to learn more stuff. I mean, you can take open source classes for like Yale and different things like that. If you go online and look, a lot of these universities are now offering open source classes. And then you can go back and get a certification later on just by taking a test. But you took the time out to go and do your research And look for open source classes for what you're trying to get certified in that will help you get more income for your job that will give you more money to invest into the market or buy real estate. Your overall goal is to be able to become financially independent. And you do that through investing. If you can acquire another skill set through getting a certification, that just makes you more valuable to your job. That in turn will, you know, when they're doing 0.9% raises for people and wages, yeah, you're going to get way higher than that because you went out there and got certified and you just made yourself more valuable to that company. So that's what I want you guys to understand. These are the things that you guys should be trying to do versus trying to rely on the social media or these people on TikTok or wherever you get your information from if you're not getting it on your own. And I'm saying, listening to me on a podcast, that's great too, right? I'm trying to give you, put put things in your in your head for you to go and do more research on. Like you can take my advice and go back and look at some of the stuff that I'm saying through charting on on the stocks and looking at real estate history or real estate data. But if you don't understand all of the stuff or how I got to my equation, then you basically just taking whatever I'm saying and going out there making decisions based on what I'm saying. I don't think that's a good idea. I, I can be sitting up here saying whatever to you guys so I can get more downloads. <laughs> I'm just saying, which I'm not doing that because I don't, I don't really care. But I'm just giving you an example on like, do further research for yourself, regardless of what podcast or what YouTube channel you're watching or what you see on the news. Take that information, go back, you know, verify it, vindicate it, do what you got to do, and then go out there, you know, in the next couple of days and then make trades based on that. But I do know that if this is something that you want to do, everyone always wants to strive to be better. I hope, you know what I mean? That's what we should be doing. But if you want to, if you really want to get ahead, if you, obviously I think you do that if you listen to my podcast, I think you should go back and, and prepare. I think you should go back and do these different things to make sure you're a, a, a great investor. But anyway, guys, I just want to hop on here and do a quick podcast and just let you guys know, man, like I didn't I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up in an environment where I just had money at my fingertips. My my dad was in the military. My mom was too. My mom made twenty five thousand dollars a year to support two kids. And that's not a lot of money. You know what I mean? You you guys know that. 
And so, like, I didn't come from that background. You know what I mean? If, if anybody knows my story from when I told it previously on a podcast, you know how I grew up. And if I can do this, anybody can do it. And I just put the work in to get where I'm going. Anybody, like, look at LeBron James, premier athlete. He didn't grow up. He, it's not like, you know, Stephen Curry is another great athlete. They grew up in two different environments. Stephen Curry grew up basically in the NBA household. His dad was in the league for however long. So he grew up completely different than LeBron. But look at LeBron. Grew up with a crackhead mom, I think. No father in the hood in, in Akron, Ohio. And look where he is. So that's what I'm saying. Everybody's life path is different, but it doesn't matter, you know, where your walk of life is. You can still you can still do it. So guys go out there and regardless of your environment, man, put the work in. And if you want to get to a place where you can be out there doing your own podcast or doing stuff in the community, writing books, creating apps, all you got to do is do the research and put the work in. But anyway, guys, I just want to hop on here for a quick minute and uh, share my thoughts on what I think people could do to be successful. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Aren't you ready to start a business or grow your real estate investing portfolio? If you answered yes, allow Andre and the expert advisors at the Residual Roads Business Institute to fast track and put you on a path to full-time investing. The greatest transfer of wealth in our lifetime is occurring over the next few years, and you can take advantage if you know what to look for. In order to be successful at real estate investing, you need to learn how to leverage your current resources to generate quick money, big money, and retirement money. Let Residual Roads Advisors craft a plan to get you through these phases using little or no money in six months or less. Don't wait for a job. Create one for yourself and others. Go to residualroads.com for mentorship and for our free course, go to residualroads.thinkific.com.